Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel that is Biochemistry Basics. Today we are going to discuss one important topic that is heme synthesis and its regulation. Learning of for today's video are first introduction, then we will see structure of porphyrin ring, then we will see the main heme synthesis pathway, then we will see how it gets regulated, and in the last we will discuss few multiple choice questions which was asked in a various entrance examination. So let's see the introduction. So heme is basically iron containing porphyrin and heme is present as a prosthetic group in so many enzymes and so many proteins like first it is present in a hemoglobin which is which is important for the transfer of oxygen in the blood. Then it is present in myoglobin which is act as a storage of oxygen in the, in the tissues. Then it is important, then it is also present in cytochromes, which plays important role in the electron transport chain. Then it is also present in cytochrome P450, which is important for the detoxification of drugs, which is uh, this cytochrome P450 is present in the liver. Then it is present in catalase and peroxidase. These are the enzymes which are important for the free radical squenching. So these are the various proteins and enzymes, proteins and enzymes where heme is present as a prosthetic group. Now, before proceeding towards the main pathway, let's see the structure of this heme. So basically, heme is formed from four pyrrole rings. It is basically present from the four pyrrole rings, which are joined together with the help of methanyl bridges. These bridges are called as a methanyl bridges and this is called as a pyrrole ring. So, these pyrrole rings can be numbered in the Roman numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 and this methanyl bridges can be numbered as a alpha, beta, gamma and delta. So, that is the structure of porphyrin ring and basically there are the so many isomers of this porphyrin rings are present but in the human beings type 3 porphyrin rings are commonly seen. So, this is the structure of porphyrin. Now, let's see the main pathway. So, before proceeding for the main pathway, let's see the site of heme synthesis. So, mainly heme is synthesized in uh, majority all the cells of the body except the mature, erythro uh, mature erythrocytes or mature RBCs, but the major site of the heme synthesis in, that is seen in the liver and in the bone marrow. So, that is the site of synthesis. Now let's see the main path. The first step of the heme synthesis is occur in the mitochondria and it is the rate limiting step of the heme synthesis. So the first step is there is a condensation of glycine which is a simple amino acid with the succinyl CoA and this succinyl CoA comes from the TCA cycle. So condensation of glycine and succinyl CoA with the help of enzyme that is called as a ALA synthase enzyme and it is the rate limiting enzyme of heme synthesis in the presence of one coenzyme that is PLP, pyridoxal phosphate, that leads to synthesis of delta amino levulinic acid. Now, this PLP, it is the active form of uh, vitamin B6 that is pyridoxin. And if there is a deficiency of this B6, then it leads to deficiency of, the, it leads to the anemia also because this first step will not occur properly. So that is the first step of heme synthesis that leads to synthesis of delta amino levulinic acid. Now, the next, second, third and fourth step is occur in the cytosol. So, in the second step, the two molecules of delta amino levulinic acid give rise to the porphobilinogen and there is an elimination of two molecules, uh, there is an elimination of two molecules of there is elimination of one molecule of water over here and the name of enzyme is ALA dehydratase. So, as the name is ALA dehydratase, there is elimination of one molecule of water. Now, this ALA dehydratase enzyme is also inhibited by lead. So, in the lead poisoning, what, what will happen if you are having any suspect that is having lead poisoning, in the urine of that suspect, you can see the uh, you can you can uh, very well estimate the level of ALA because this ALA will will start excreting in the urine of uh, urine of patient of lead poisoning because this lead inhibits the ALA dehydratase. So that is the importance of that is the one clinical application 
Now, after conversion of delta amino lavalinic acid to the porphobilinogen, the four molecules of porphobilinogen will condense and there is an elimination of four molecules of ammonia and that will lead to the one intermediate compound that is called as a hydroxymethyl bilin and it is the linear tetrapyrrole structure and it is the this step is carried out by the porphobilinogen D aminase as there is an elimination of four molecules of ammonia so the name of enzyme is porphobilinogen D aminase and this hydroxymethyl bilin is spontaneously uh, spontaneously converted to the uroporphyrinogen 3 which is the uh, which is the cyclical structure so there is a cycle uh, which is the cyclical structure so this hydroxymethyl bilin is spontaneously converted to the uroporphyrinogen 3 with the help of uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase now this uroporphyrinogen 3 is converted to the copro porphyrinogen 3 and there is an elimination of four molecule of carbon dioxide and the name of enzyme is uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase as there is an elimination of four molecule of CO2. So this all steps occur in a cytosol while the first step occurs in the mitochondria. Now this copro porphyrinogen 3 further enters into the mitochondria so the rest of the steps now will occur in the mitochondria itself. So coproporphyrinogen 3 will enter into the mitochondria and this coproporphyrinogen 3 is oxidatively decarboxylase, uh, oxidatively, oxidative decarboxylation occurs. So there is an elimination of two molecules of CO2 and the name of enzyme is coproporphyrinogen oxidase and it gets converted to the, it gets converted to the protoporphyrinogen 9. So that is the synthesis of protoporphyrinogen 9. Now this protoporphyrinogen 9 again it gets protoporphyrinogen 9 again it gets oxidized with the help of protoporphyrinogen oxidase and it gets it leads to synthesis of protoporphyrin. So that is the protoporphyrin and this protoporphyrin combines with the iron molecule that is that is present in the Fe plus 2 form with the help of ferrochelatase enzyme or which is also called as a heme synthase enzyme and it gets converted to the it gets converted to the heme so that is how this heme is synthesized and this heme can very well very well do the feedback inhibition of first step of the heme synthesis that is uh, condensation of glycine to the succinyl CoA so there is a feedback inhibition done with the help of heme to the first step. So there, this is how this heme is synthesized first and the last three steps are occurring in the mitochondria while the second, third and fourth step is occurring in the cytosol. Now let's see the regulation part. So the heme synthesis is, is, synthesis is mainly regulated with the help of rate limiting enzyme that is called as the ALA synthase enzyme. And it is allosterically regulated with the allosterically regulation done with the help of heme. Second important point is this synthesis, this ALA synthesis exists exist in a two form. One is the type 1 form and another is the type 2 form. Type 1 form is present in all the uh, cells of the body while the type 2 is mainly present in the erythroid, erythroid precursor, cell, precursor cells. Fine. Now, if you are taking any kind of drugs like barbiturates or uh, steroids, that will lead to the stimulation of cytochrome P450, which is uh, which is responsible for the detoxification of drugs. And as we have seen in the previous slide, the cytochrome P450 also contain heme. So, at the time of consumption of such drugs, there will be also stimulation of this heme synthesis. So availability of the heme is the main important aspect for the regulation of this uh, heme synthesis and as we have also seen that few steps is occurring in the mitochondria while the few steps are occurring in the cytosol so the compartmentalization of enzymes are also play important role in the regulation of this heme synthesis. So that is all about the heme synthesis. Now let's see the few uh, multiple choice question which was asked in a various entrance exam. So the first question is, which was asked in Ames, November 2015, that heme biosynthesis do not occur in, and the options are osteocyte, liver, RBC, and erythro erythroid cells of bone marrow. 
so we all know the answer that heme synthesis doesn't occur in mature rbc so the correct answer is c now let's see the second multiple so second multiple choice question is which is which is or which was also asked in a aims november 2015 that in lead lead poisoning which of the following is seen in urine so the options are delta amino lavalinic acid uroporphyrin coproporphyrin and protoporphyrin so as we have seen in the pathway that lead very well inhibit the ala uh, lead very well inhibit the one enzyme that is called as a ala dehydratase enzyme so as the there is inhibition of this ala dehydratase enzyme so ala will start getting accumulated and it will start exiting urine so the correct answer is a that is delta amino lavalinic acid third multiple choice question is number of pyrrole ring in the porphyrin porphyrin and the multiple and the options are 2 3 4 and 1 so we all know the answer that uh, number of pyrrole ring in the porphyrin is porphyrins are four four porf pyrrole rings are present in the structure of porphyrin so that is correct answer is four these are the references watching the uh, video please like share and subscribe biochemistry basics by dr amit thank you